Have you ever wished that you had an extra pair of hands managing your Zoom meeting for you? Someone who can help admit participants, maybe check to make sure someone's not unmuted, or even share screens while you focus on your presentation? That's exactly what a co-host can do for you. Hi, I'm Betsy, and in this video, I'll show you step-by-step -step how to make someone a co-host and explain when the option is available because it may not be what you think. Now let's go take a look and I'll get you set up as a co-host. So here we are in a Zoom meeting and I'm going to make Kyle here my co-host. That way, all the capabilities that I have as a host, well, excluding just a few, Kyle will be able to do what I normally do behind the scenes. And that's going to free me up to focus on the people that are in the meeting, watching engagement, making sure I'm teaching my content. And Kyle can also think ahead. So we're a team. And when it comes to running a meeting smoothly, it's up to other people in the room who are on my team to know, hey, she's about to do this in her class. And so we're going to go set that part up for her behind the scenes. And that's what a co-host can do for you. So the way you do it is one of these mainly these two ways that you can assign someone as a co-host. And I'm about to show you, but I want you to know right off the bat that you cannot assign someone a co-host if they are not in the Zoom meeting with you. So you cannot assign it to them like before they arrive. And just stay with me. There is a place where a lot of you have asked me, hey, but what about this setting? I'm going to go over there and show you. So just hang with me. But first, let's just look at those two ways. The first way is you go to the person's video thumbnail as here, and there's three dots in the upper right corner. And as this menu appears, you go down to where it says make co-host. And when you click there, you get a confirmation just to make sure that you're clicking on the thing you wanted to do. And when you click confirm, that is it. Now, Kyle is a co-host in the meeting and has all of the capabilities like launching a poll for me or admitting people from the waiting room or even going into the participants list, which looks like this and muting everybody. So down there at the bottom of this participants window, there is a mute all button, but you only see it when you're a host or a co-host. So now Kyle can do this for me. And you can see next to our names, I am the host and he is the co-host. Now let's just talk a little bit about roles in a meeting. You see, there can only be one host in a Zoom meeting. It's usually the person who owns the account and the person who scheduled the meeting. And then there can be unlimited number of co-hosts. That's right. A lot of people think you can only have one per host. And it's like, oh, well, you've just learned there's only one host. Well, you can have unlimited. So if you've got a Zoom meeting with a larger audience capacity, let's say 500 people, you can actually assign, if you wanted to, 100 co-hosts and then assign each co-host to a small group of people. Because inside Zoom meetings, you can also break them out into smaller rooms. And those are called breakout rooms. And if you want to know more about all of these features that Zoom has, check out our video called the Complete Beginner's Guide to Zoom. And you'll find a link to that video in the description below. Now, the second way that you can make someone a co-host and assign them those responsibilities is to go to the participants list, like I am here, and then hover, so place your mouse pointer over their name, and then these two buttons appear, and one of them says more, and when you click there, you just come down to where it says make co-host. So it's very similar to the first way, it's just that if you're working in the participants list, it can be a little easier, because if you are assigning co-host capability to a bunch of people, you have to do it one at a time, then they'll be listed here in the participants list. And I'll give you a little trick here. When you look at the participants list, it is listed in a certain sort order based on people being muted or unmuted. And if you want to know more about this participants list and how people are listed either alphabetically by first name, check out our video called How to Find Who's Unmuted. And we've put the link to that video in the description below. If for some reason 
you need to take the co-host capability away from someone as the host, you can do that. You just hover over their name in the participants list. Of course, one of the co-hosts click that more button. And then you see right there, it says revoke co-host permissions. And it's not that they lost their permission to do it. It's just that if you have a large group, maybe some of your helpers are co-hosts just during the first part of your event, or maybe they're just a co-host while they get you set up. And then once you start presenting, they leave the meeting and that's possible. So you just click revoke and they are back to a regular participant. Now, keep in mind, there's only one host in every Zoom meeting. And in some cases, I've seen other people do this, where they give away their host capability. You want to be careful about this because you are giving away the ability to, let's say, end the meeting because only the host can end the meeting and only the host can add Zoom polls to a meeting. There are only a few responsibilities that only the host can do. So you want to be very careful that when you do give it away, that you're giving it away to someone that you trust. So the role of the host. But I wanted you to know that this is possible because there is a scenario where people ask me, is there a way that I can set up the meeting? I can schedule it, send out the invites. I will start it, but then I'm not going to be there for its entirety. And I want someone else to be able to, let's say like close up shop, right? I want them to be able to end the meeting without me there. And this is how you would do it. So let's say Kyle is here as my team member and we're getting all set up and then he is actually going to present. And then I'm going to leave the meeting. In that scenario, I would click on his, his name with the more button as we did earlier. And this time I would say make host. So when I click there and it says, would you like to change host? There's only one host in the meeting. So watch what happens. I change host. And now next to our names here, I am no longer the host. He has all capability. And the only way that we can assign more co-hosts in a meeting is for Kyle to make them. I can't even assign anybody as co-host right now because I have no capability. It's as if I'm a regular participant in the meeting. Now, if it is my my time to leave the meeting so that Kyle can take over and present. Well, I can do that now because you can see down there in my bar, it says leave. On Kyle's bar, it will say end meeting. So now he has the ability as host to take over. In another scenario where you have given over host capability to someone, but you are still there in the room and then you want to get it back. Luckily, because this is your meeting, the one that you scheduled, you still have the ability to reclaim it, to get it back. So Zoom recognizes that this meeting right now is being run out of your account. The recording that is going on is land. If it's recording to a cloud, it's recording to the, to the Zoom cloud under your account. If that's the case, then you can reclaim host. And in the participants list at the bottom, you see there's a button there and it says reclaim. Perfect. So I just click that and now I'm the host again. If for some reason you go and you notice that the make co-host option isn't even there, that means that you must enable it in your account prior to your event even starting. So it's so important that you come through and you do a test run, open a Zoom meeting, invite a friend in, maybe even your phone or your tablet into the Zoom meeting so that you can see if you have this option. You won't be able to tell unless someone else is in the meeting with you. So if you did not have that setting, now watch, I'm going to take you to where you actually turn it on before any of your Zoom meetings start. So to find out whether your account has the co-host setting enabled or not, go here, start over at zoom.us and then go to the settings option for your meeting. And when you scroll down to the basic section, you'll notice right here that the co-host option must be turned on. So that little switch on the right side needs to be blue. If it's gray, go ahead and, and turn it on. So it's really important to know how to prepare when you come into your settings way ahead of time of your Zoom event starting, you can make sure that these settings are enabled. Now, keep in mind 
that if you have a free Zoom account, you don't even have these options. So if you're looking for them and you're wondering, that's why. There is so much value in using at least the pro account inside Zoom. That's the one that's about $160 a year, at least at this time of this recording. And then just keep in mind that the co-host also cannot start the meeting that the host scheduled inside their account. Zoom does set these limitations on the roles inside the meetings. So keep in mind that as a co-host, you cannot do the following. You cannot start closed captioning. Almost every Zoom meeting has the ability to have captions, but the host has to turn that on. You cannot start live streaming. That's another good one. You can actually live stream from Zoom into Facebook or YouTube, but only the host can start that. And by the way, we have a great video on our channel on how to live stream. And it's a wonderful video because Facebook changed the way we do that. And you can find that in a link in the description below. You can also see that co-hosts cannot end the meeting, as we mentioned earlier, as well as make another participant a co-host. And then finally, a co-host cannot start the waiting room. So that's inside the host's account. That's where the waiting room is started. However, the co-host can move people from the waiting room into the main meeting room or back again. Sometimes someone is admitted and they're not supposed to be there or they're not supposed to be in the meeting room yet. And so you can put them back in the waiting room. Now you can make someone a co-host in your Zoom meeting. This simple step can completely change how smoothly your meetings run, especially when you're managing a big group. If you found this helpful, please give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe and check out my playlist below for more Zoom tips and tricks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.